All right, how you guys doing out there today? As you can see, my title is called uh, The Gospel Before the Dispensation of the Church Age. Once again, it's the gospel before the dispensation of the church age. A lot of you don't understand dispensation means period of time. But before I even get started, um, Christ had gave a message, and it was to the whole human family. It wasn't just to one group of people. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, uh, and verse 5, it says, Except a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And verse 3 tells you, Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you find out there is a process of procedure because verse 5, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Except a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom kingdom of God. So there is a process of procedure and you see that process of procedure in Acts 2 and Acts uh, 2 and 38 where it says to repent and be baptized there's your water. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the entrance into the kingdom of God. Notice it says there's water, the baptism there's, in Acts 4 it says neither is there any other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You find the name there. Okay, in Acts 2.38, the name is there. It is for the remission of sins, which ties it to Revelations 1 and 5. Revelations 1 and 5, it said uh, he washed us from our sins in his own blood. He loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So the blood is applied through somebody baptizing you in the name of Jesus Christ. And it said whosoever should call him a name. So it was not locked to a clergy thing, but it's somebody holding you under the water, standing over you and saying, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of uh, remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and they bring you back up out of that water. Okay, so here you got, you got repentance, you got baptism, you have his name there, and you have the Holy Ghost, and the blood of Christ is applied through the baptism in Jesus' name. So let's go on and look at, and that's for the whole human family, None of us can enter to the kingdom except we submit and realize our ways are contrary to the word of God. And we must turn back to God or turn to God and be baptized in Jesus' name, showing our submission unto his word. Okay. And so when we begin to look at uh, the gospel before the church age, the dispensation of the church age, people, we find here the best way to look at it is go back and look when Christ was being foretold to come and he was talking to David the prophet. And as he was talking to David the prophet in First Chronicles chapter 17 verse 11, Nathan had came to David by night because David had desired to build God a house. Okay? And he said, and it shall come to pass when that day, when thy days be expired, when our days be expired, talking to David, when he had ceased to be another, when his life has passed, that thou must go to be with thy father when he was dead and buried, I will rise up unto thee, up, up thy seed after thee. I will rise up thy seed after thee. This is what he was telling David. Which shall be of thy sons, in other words, in generations to come, and I will establish his kingdom. Same thing Christ was telling you through Water and spirit, you enter into the kingdom of God. Except the man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He can't, you won't be able to enter into the kingdom of God except you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's scripture, Acts 2.38. That is where the blood of Christ, that life that he gave for you, is applied to your life. Okay, so he goes on and he, t he says, so he's telling David that in the generations to come, that he was going, he was going to establish his kingdom through an heir of his, and he said, and "He shall be." He said, "And he shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever." So we're talking about a king. This, this is the gospel before, even though we're in the oh, Old Testament. I'm going to go to the New. When Christ Jesus was born, he was born King of the Jews. So he was prophetically speaking of a time to come. And he said that I will be his father. Notice he said, I will be his father. 
This was a God of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob speaking. He said, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. When Christ Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, if you notice, they said, talk about a cloud overshadowed, and he said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Okay? Okay? So here we see him talking about this son that he was going to bring about. And I will not take away, he said, I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee, but I will sell him in my house and in my kingdom. Notice he said, in his kingdom forever. And his throne shall be established forevermore. And according to all this word and according to all this vision, scripture revelation, so did Nathan speak unto David. Okay? So we're hearing even in the book of Daniel when he begins to talk about Christ also. So there he was talking to David. And he was telling David about Christ Jesus coming, his creation, as it says in Galatians 4 and 4, made of a woman, and we see that act being carried out in Luke 1 when he overshadowed Mary and said he let there be life, and it was like that child came about, and he said he's going to be called the Son of God, and he told him, let's, let's look at Luke 1, okay, because he said he was going to be his father. A lot of you guys go on, and, and some people are Trinitarians, and that that is the dispensation of the church age. That's when all of that Trinitarian, you're going to heaven in the rapture, later comes about, and the rapture comes about, that teaching comes about in the 1800s, okay? So scripturally, scripturally, I'm not talking about the doctrine of man, the teachings of man. That's what doctrine means. Everybody act like that's something strange. So we see him speaking. His word became flesh. Okay? When they say that, that which he spoke, he brought into reality. And we see this when he sent Gabriel, the angel, to Mary okay, of the household of David, um, he said in Luke 1, he said, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. See, because in First Chronicles, that was prophetically being spoken of. It was that which was to come. Now we've seen it carried out. Like he said, his word became fresh. That what he said is now becoming a reality. He's bringing it Back to pass of what he said, okay? And it says, and that's Isaiah 48 and 3, I believe it is, when he talked about his word, what he spoke of, and then he did it suddenly. But he told you before it happened. And then Galatians 4 and 4 says, he said, Galatians 4 and 4 says, made of a woman, he was created through a woman. He said, a virgin, he said, to a virgin, the angel Gabriel, he said, he was son too, and this is uh, Luke 1 and 20. Six and twenty in verse twenty six, and I'm in verse twenty seven now. He says to a virgin exposed to a man who name was Joseph of look it, of the house of David, who he was speaking of in First Chronicles chapter seven when he was speaking to him. So the house of David, this is what he told David. Now it is happening. It says to a virgin 
named Mary. Okay, so she's a virgin. She has not been intimate with any man. And the angel came into her, into, into her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee and bless thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. You know, what was this all about? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. God, after he determined that that was the woman who he was going to create, Jesus was Galatians 4, and for made of a woman. Okay? okay? It says, and so it goes on and said, and behold, thou, he said, and the angel said, Fear not, okay, if I favor God. Verse 31, he said, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. She says, Conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call, okay, so he said, and, and said, it shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. See, the angel had told Mary what to name him. As in Joseph and Matthews, when Joseph was thinking about putting her away because she was pregnant and he had not been with her, he just he didn't really understand. But the angel came to him in a dream and told him to name the child Jesus. Neither parent named the child, okay? But the name Jesus was given her Yeshua in the original tongue. Okay, and he shall be. He said, and he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. Notice the Son of Highest. He never said that that was God. He said it was the son of the highest as he said i will be his father see the church era the dispensation of the church age started in 325 and 325 is where we get the confusion that christ was talking about many coming in my name and deceiving many okay he said in the lord show and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, as he was telling David in First Chronicles 17. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom, there shall be no end. See, from the beginning, before the dispensation of the church age, the, it was about a kingdom. Okay, what? about a church like they made church and all of that originates in 325 325 years after christ have descended into heaven they finally conquered again and it goes back into what the bible talks about and let me finish this out and i'll show you where where that, all of this comes in the church age and the dispensation of this age understanding the gospel the original gospel that was taught before all of this mass confusion that we see today he said okay and, and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his the throne he's talking about a king in a physical government system and he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end then said mary unto the angel how shall this be see because she asked him about how am i supposed to produce this male child see i know not a man this king that is coming and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come up on thee and the power of the high shall overshadow it so just like when he overshadowed the face of the deep and said let there be light he overshadowed mary and said let there be life and here comes the child that age begin to germinate 4 16 32 30 however you want to say go on and on into that human being christ jesus so therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of hot of the son of God because God had created him through the Mar the womb of Mary Galatians 4 and 4 made of a woman in other words he created him through the womb of Mary when he overshadowed the power of the third he spoke and there was life Daniel speaks of him after the death because he played the part of savior he gave his life for the human family okay and it's uh uh the gospel of john this is before the church age in this dispensation of the church age where he talked about let me grab that real quick because he was telling us something he was telling us and this is christ um i'm gonna go back to daniel too um 
Christ himself was speaking and his ministry had started uh, and he like he was born the king of the Jews and he had grown to a point where he began to teach the words of God and he goes on to say and Jesus went out and departed from the, the temple and his disciples came to from to show him the building of the temple and Jesus said unto them see now because he's talking about where they were at in time and what was in, in a, the short future tip what was about to happen see ye not all these things verily i say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down okay understand something he was talk talking about the time of vestus and titus of the roman empire when they flattened the uh, uh jerusalem the roman empire okay the italians flattened jerusalem they only left the Hellenate wall, which they call the Willing Wall today. That was a Hellenation wall built during the time of Alexandra. That wall was the only thing left standing. Okay? That's the only thing they left as a remembrance of what they had did there. They had demolished the city, totally destroyed that city. It was no more at that time. And it happened not too far long after uh, the disciples. Okay? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed. Okay, wait a minute. And he sat up on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? In other words, what was going to be the signs of him coming to establish this kingdom that God had talked about to David? Okay, and it's written about throughout this Bible. Jesus answered and said it in him. Now, this is what he's talking about. Take heed. That no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. He is speaking of the dispensation of the church age when you got all these religions coming out of what is the Vatican. Revelations, and we're going to get back, back to Daniel. And remember, we're talking about the gospel before the dispensation of the church age. Here's Revelations. Revelations 12 show you what he was talking about. Revelations 12 tells you, and he was talking because when, when we start out in this chapter, he's talking about the nation of Israel. So there appeared a great wonder in heaven. This is Revelations 12. And a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And up on her head, a crown of 12 stars. Okay. And, and she being with child, crying. So he's talking about that nation symbolically. But he's still, still talking about Christ. He's not really talking about Mary. He's talking about that nation who's going to bring about a king to dominate this world. Travelling in pain. I mean, travelling in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder. So when he talked about the 12 stars, he was talking about the nation of Israel. Okay. In verse 3, he said, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. He is talking about Lucifer, that fallen cherubim, and his government system that we are now all living under okay this is what he's talking about and we'll get to that too i got time I'm, if you're in a rush then go and do what you gotta do but this video is a what video we'll sit here you can come back and dissect it take it apart piece by piece look at the scriptures and see what i'm saying and so and his tail drew the third parts of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth okay talk about that the angels and the dragon stood before the woman that nation of israel he was standing in herod the king when the three wise men came and asked about where is he that has been born king of the jews and herod was there and he told he went out and that's matthews uh two i believe it is he went out and had because they, they the wise men never came back being warned of god they went out in a different way and then he had all the kids murdered. He was standing in that man called Herod. Okay. Satan himself. Okay. 
Right. And he said, and, he said, and the dragon stood before the woman, that nation of Israel, and was ready, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay. And she and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations. They say who was another who's to rule. That was can be out of there because that's that's like a past, like something that's happening. We're talking present tense. Who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was cut up unto God into his throne. We're talking about Christ Jesus. And the woman, that nation, fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that she should feed her uh, there a thousand two hundred and three scores and sixty. And there was war in heaven. Notice this. Satan was trying to overthrow the governance of God. This is what this is all about. You guys hold a book in your hand that is precious. He's given us an insight into everything that's happening, how to have a relationship with him, how to enter into his kingdom. And to give us an understanding of the world we're looking at and why there's so much mass confusion. And he's letting you see Satan, how he had rebelled against God's governance and decided to set up his own system to try to supersede God, which God cursed him and he can't, can't do nothing with God. God is transcending. He's above all. And he lives outside of his creation, okay? Without God, there's nothing. You know, so we're dealing with that. And we're living it today. So here it is. The devil made his move. First of all, he had Adam and Eve break seven commandments because it's not as simple as a tree that one just ate from, okay? He's like, they ate from the tree, the God, good knowledge and evil, you know, this is religion, you know, we're dealing with the dispensation of the church age where you hear that at, and it's scriptural. And he, he ate he ate of that, they ate of the fruit. The woman was sitting there, she was coveting, that's the first sin. Then she took something that was they told not to take, that was stealing. Then she gave to her husband, when he gave to her husband, he disobeyed his parent. Satan called the first blast, remember, he called God a lie that God was not going to take action after he told him he was. Okay? Uh, there was murder because it brought death into the whole human family. And we always blame God, and that started in, in, in Eden, where we were eternal beings. Okay? But he let it run his course. Okay? And so, so here you have Satan did his thing, um, still in murder. Oh, they put another God, they made him a little G, because there was there's never been no other God, but he became a little G. You know, they put they 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 gave themselves to him. That's what brought the whole human family under his control. He they submitted to another God. He wasn't a God, but he became one. There's even mythological stories and they're really referring to Adam and Eve in him when he became a God. Um and so all of this stuff that happened, but it was seven commandments broken at that tree. So now he makes his next move into the heavens. He's, he's thinking he's going to God and record him in the garden. He cursed him above all everything. He said, upon their belly thou shalt go. Then people don't understand. He said, upon my belly dust shall I eat all the days of life. He said, man was what? He said, breathed into man, in, uh, the dust, created man from the dust of the ground and breathed into him. And he became a living soul. So man, he's consumed with the destruction of the man. That's, that's what's happening with him today. He's consumed with that. He's gone in his belly, like he said in his, um, the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 30, said, Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the innermost parts of his mind. He's been set in his own head. In other words, he's gone into the innermost parts of his mind, and he is consumed with the destruction of us. And all of you guys who say you submitted to him, you already belong to him. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, the blood has never been applied to your life, you know, baptism in Jesus' name. You, you already belong to Satan. You don't have to dedicate yourself to something you already belong to. Okay, and there was war in heaven. So now he calls himself going up and take what God has. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels, okay? So he had a, a group of angels that sided with him. And they prevailed not, neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. They were exiled. They were kicked out of heaven. They were kicked on to the planet Earth. 
and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Look at this is the angel. This is not a real snake, snake like he's he got poison in his mouth. But he says, he said they kicked out that a great dragon was cast out, that seven headed dragon. Okay, you read Revelation 17, you find out those are kings, those are government systems. Revelation 17, all the way down into this time we're at now. It said, call the devil, okay, and Satan, which deceived it. ETH, he's in the process even now, deceived the whole world, and he was cast out into the earth. See, God sent him to a Pacific place, the earth with us. <laughs> we had sent him to the moon. And, said, <coughs> and his angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice say in heaven, now is come salvation. When did salvation come to the human family? And strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brother and is cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. And, see, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Where is the blood of the Lamb? How are you overcoming? By submitting to the scriptures. Somebody takes you. Hold you under water. You believe in that Christ is the Son of God and has died for your sin. And hold you for that rich rebellious nature you have towards God. Hold you under the water, standing over you. And they say, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Bring you back up out of that water. The blood has been applied to your life. Okay? That's where the blood of the Lamb is. It's in Acts 238. That's how the blood is applied to your life. And the words of their testimony, they love not their lives unto death. He said, therefore, rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. He's not fooled. He knows his time is running out, so he's trying to wipe us out. He's having, trying to bring about a government system, you know, to destroy man in itself, in its entirety. Now, here we go back. He said, so it goes on and says, when the dragon saw that he was cast into earth, he persecuted the woman, that nation of Israel, which brought forth the man, another man child, okay? He brought forth that man, the man Christ Jesus. It says, to the woman, and to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half time from the face of the serpent. Notice that time, time, and a half, that's 42 months. The beginning of the new world order is when you will see the two children of Israel, the natural children of Israel. We're not talking about this spiritual, but natural descendants of Israel. Okay, that's the Bible. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. That's all the church era. This is where we got it. This is where it comes from. They cast out of, out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, after that kingdom that woman represents the nation of israel to hide the message of the kingdom of god that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood so you wouldn't know about the coming kingdom in the earth the carnal people helped the woman helped the nation of israel and the earth opened her mouth they received this false teaching it was the false teaching of um the open mouth the false teaching of the church era Okay, the church, the dispensation of the church era. And swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. They received it. The world is all Christian, Islamic. These teachings come from him. He's the father of all lies. And the dragon was wrought with the woman, with that nation of Israel, went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, okay? Those baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. He went to make war. You see the same thing talked about in Isaiah. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. In 
thing it is. It says, okay, it says, so, so shall thou fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, the spirit of the standard against him, holiness, the submission to baptism in Jesus' name. All those who are rejecting God will not get baptized in Jesus' name. Believe that, even when you make it plain. Okay. He says, they lift up a standard against him, the ways of holiness, righteousness. Okay, so when the enemy shall come in like a flood, that was the church era in itself. Okay, so we see Daniel, when he sees Christ after his death, and when Mary had met him in the garden, he said, don't touch me because I sent to my father, your father. And he said, it, and this is uh, Daniel 7, verse 13, and I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. Notice it's the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days like they were looking in Acts 1 who was received up by the cloud. I mean, that's that's after the fact when he went into the heaven. But before, he, before even that happened, he went into the heavens to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. That This is the gospel before the church and the dispensation of the church age. Okay? The gospel, the glory and um, the kingdom that all people, nation, languages should serve him. That's why I said all. Not now they do say was. No, what he is to rule. Okay? Go back and look at that. I'm going to quick here, people. See, they put a was, who was, who is to rule all nations. Shouldn't be a was there. So who is to rule all nations. Because you see, when he's talking here in Daniel, that all men, languages, tongues, and nations should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. <coughs> so we got to understand we're dealing with these nations and when he was talking here in Matthews when he said many should come in my name and should deceive many and many should say I, I am Christ they're acting as if they have the gospel but they don't and that's what he was talking about in Paul when he talked in Galatians 1 and says I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another but they Hey, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or angels from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Okay, and he said, and, and as we said before, so I now again, if any man preach any other, or you teach any other gospel unto you, then that which you have received, let him be accursed. For I, for do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So you see, he's already telling you. In his own time, there were already people turning people, working on them to bring them into an establishment of that dispensation. The church age was started in 325. This is what the Bible is talking about. For it says, for the mystery of iniquity do a Already work that was already in operation in their time. That was Satan at work. Only who now let it until he be uh, would let it say so until he be taken out of the way. And what's going to happen at the combination of this? Because the church era has come to a close. Believe it or not, that dispensation that really the, the and I know a lot of some people, some preachers would disagree, but we're not in the ever learning state. See when we were going through that dispensation of the church age, we're supposed to really understand and God revealing to you through his spirit that is about a kingdom. Okay? And that's what we're talking about. So when we get here, it's, it's already working. It's going to lead up to this. Then shall that wicked be revealed when the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth 
and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, says, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness, deceived in their own unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, the day of Pentecost was a spiritual birth of the kingdom of God. That's what he was talk talking about in Luke uh, chapter 17, verse 20, 21, when he said the kingdom of God would be within you. So we've seen the spiritual birth. Now we're waiting the physical arrival. We're waiting for that wicked one, and that's the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene, and when he comes on the scene, uh, he's going to usher in uh, which is going to uh, usher in this one world order. I'm looking at people, I'm looking at all the places I jump. So Daniel was letting you know that he'd say Christ was before God, so we know he's not God. See, that started in 325 and a little bit before with Tertullian, this triune God that the Bible does not teach. Okay? And in Acts 2 and 22, let me grab this other. Scripture, but I'll show you exactly what Christ. Okay, I love it. We want stuff doing certain things. Okay, go to the cinema. There we go. Okay, could I show you what Christ was teaching? Because he was talking to Moses about the same Christ that I'm talking about now, and he told Moses in Deuteronomy 18, "I will rise up a prophet from among thy brethren." like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I, I, that I commanded him. So Christ was sent, and that which he told you in, in uh, the Gospel of John, people take this out of content. I'm going to show you in a second. Hold on. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he has shall speak in my name, Okay, I will require require it of him. In other words, you will fall upon the judgment. Let's look at this real quick. Five in Gospel of John five four three say and he says he should speak in my name. This is the confusion. Isaiah nine, his name. You guys said no, it's Christ Jesus is God. No, the Bible does not teach it. That is the dispensation of the church age. That is, many should come in my name and shall deceive many. The mystery of iniquity. Iniquity already work. Okay. And 543 it is, people. Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 43. Look what he says. So I've come in my father's name. That's why Mary and Joseph did not name him. He was named at his father, name above every name, Philippians 2. He was given his father's name. I've come in my father's name. Okay, many that confuse many. They look at Isaiah when he talk about mighty God on that Isaiah nine. I if, I if I won't mess it up, and we still talking about the gospel before the dispensation of the church age, what Christ was really teaching versus what we hear today. Okay, scriptural, rightfully dividing the words of truth, not stuck in the ever learning state of mind, not knowing these things were concealed up until a different time, and in the COVID time, come, it really ended that church age. A lot of people don't realize that era is over. We were, we were, we've gone through that time. Now we're down into the point of the digital dollar, Revelation 13, the mark of the beast. No man can buy or sell except he that had the mark of the beast. Okay? That digital dollar that started out in China, the kings of the east are together now. It says, for unto us a child is born. Talking about Christ Jesus, unto us a son is given, given for our sins. And the government, the government people. See, we're talking about a spiritual and physical government. Shall be upon his shoulder. Okay? Spiritually right now, but eventually... It's going to be a physical government, just like the New World Order is going, really coming into existence, into view. Many of you, some people, depending on how old you are, you guys know about the One World Order. I've been told we used to be worried about that all the time. All of a sudden, it's become a thing of no problem. And then 
they talk about a digital dollar where they can tell track every transaction you make. A totalitarian system of government is arising, people. America is on its way out the door because it was the reserve currency. So it said, government shall be up on his shoulder. His name. How can I? Why can't people catch that? His name. N a n e. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of His government in peace there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David, as it was talking about First Chronicles chapter seventeen, the Old Testament people, upon of the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth and even forever. And the zeal of the Lord will perform it. Okay? It said, the Lord sent a word in Jacob, the nation of Israel. And it has a light up on Israel. Okay? So here it is. His name shall be called. And so we in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, 43, under clearing up a lot of mess. I have come in my Father's name, a name above every name. And you receive me not. If another should come in his own name, him you will receive. When the Antichrist comes, he's going to come in his own name, in the name of humanity and fixing problems. Okay? So Christ Jesus, when he came, he said, what well, was he teaching? This is the gospel before the dispensation of the church age. So it shall come to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the what? Kingdom of God. It is not about religion. That is the tradition of men that many of you are shackled to. <coughs> the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Now, what happened in Luke? That's Luke eight, Luke nine. Then he called. He said, "Then he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach what the kingdom of God <coughs> to heal and to heal the sick. So, what are you bringing? This is the problem that we have today. People are." coming with their own mess. They look at this, the Gospel of John, and he and I, was, I came down here and he said, Hold on, people. Here, verse 10, the Gospel of John, when he tells you that, like God said, he was going to be the one speaking through him. In the word, in the, when he went all the way back to Deuteronomy 18, he said, Believe thou now that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me, and the words <coughs> excuse me, that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. But what do you guys say? That he said he is God. Chapter 14, he's God, he's God. That ain't, that's not what that's telling you. That was God speaking through him. Acts 2.22 clarifies that for you. And of the man of Israel, he said, you men of Israel, hear the words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Now, God was working through him. Gospel of John chapter 14. He tells you clearly, the Father that which is in me, so you guys trip out when he said, you have been so long with me, Philip, and have not you known me? God was in that man, speaking to him. And the Bible clarifies it, and it's called rightfully dividing the words of truth. See, that comes out of the dispensation of the church age. This is all starting. It had already started in their time, but it culminated when they, they foundation it, had to put it, probably put it together, it was 325 A.D., from that came what you guys call today Christianity. You guys have a cross, and you, you, you look at the cross and you say, okay, so it wasn't simple. But when he was exiling the children of Israel, 
Well, he's forewarning him at that time, but they they already were gonna do. He already knew what they was going to do. Uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight verse thirty six. What do it tells you? You guys get up. Many of you out today on Sunday. He said, "And the Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou hast set over thee." In other words, it wasn't somebody sent by God unto a nation which neither thou nor thy father have known. Unto a nation which neither thou nor thy father known. Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even down to David, they all knew where Africa was. They knew where Europe was. They fighting the Italians, and they knew. The Far East, China, and all that, because they were coming through, Israelites were coming through with trade, and they even brought Joseph. Okay, they knew where that was, but with the land that the Father did not know, said, Thou shalt not, it, it, that into a nation, into a land which not, not far enough. they're talking about the Americas, the Western Hemisphere. That's the only place that was not known up until 1492. This is your Bible. This is the King James Bible. Unto a nation which neither thou nor thy father nor talking about the new world America. And then shall thou serve other gods. Notice this. Other gods. What kind of gods? What? Christianity? What? Christianity? What is the cross? Is that not a wooden stake? What? what? And stone. What is stone? Oh, we don't know about Mecca. They encase, they encase rock. And even the rock over there that they're talking about or the dome of the rock in Jerusalem. The rock. Islam. Other gods. It has nothing to do with the God of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is religion and the tradition of man, stuff concocted by man's mind. And in 325, we start this thing, Christianity. I know people talk about chapter uh, 11, I think 11 and 10 in Acts, where they say they, they, say they call them Christians. That was a derogatory term. They was trying to belittle them at that time. The Bible itself calls us saints of God. To the letters of the saints, every epistle, Daniel was saying about the kingdom. Daniel. Daniel 7. Okay, Daniel 7. So we see Christ comes and get the power. And he talked about how his kingdom will never be destroyed. Then we jump down and he talked about these kings, the great beasts, chapter, verse 17, chapter 7, Daniel, chapter 7, verse 17. And the great beasts, which were, are, are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Kingdom, people. But the saints, where's the word Christian at, people? But the saints, where is Christian at? That starts in 325. That is the dispensation of the church era. That is the age of deception. That's when Satan flooded, the flood that came out of Satan's mouth to deceive the world. That's why around the world he was saying, I'm a Christian. Reject baptism in Jesus' name. I'm a Christian. This said, Lord, prayer. you don't have to be baptized. And here it is. The Bible tells you. In Mark 16, 16, he that believe it and is baptized. But a lot of you say, oh, you don't have to do that. But the scripture says you do. So have you become Satan? See, this is what's going on. Not knowing the word of God. Say, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. No, your church religion. Shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom even for even forever, even forever and ever, without end, the kingdom. But 325 marks that dispensation of the church era. This is when a man begins to insert his opinion into the word of God. It's not scriptural. You know, it's, it's not spiritually discerned. It is man to get and this is what the Bible tells us, uh, Jeremiah 23. One, Jeremiah 23. Okay. And so you see, and you're listening to that, which has come from man. And, so, and the Lord, and the Lord, and this is Jeremiah 23, we'll start at 16. The Lord of hosts, 
said, hearken not until the words of the prophets that prophesied to these preachers out here talking to you. The error of the dispensation of the church error. So hearken not until these that prophesied to you. No prophesied really tell the future events or teach you with preaching. That they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart. All of this what you're hearing is coming out of their mind. They cannot show you scripturally. That's why they tell you Trinity is a mystery because scripturally they can't prove it. It can be disproven scripturally. Acts 2.22 kills the whole argument of the Gospel of John chapter 14. God was working through him. And he called him a man. And in Galatians 4, 4, he was made of a woman. Luke 1. Go back to Luke 1. What it says, he overshadowed Mary and said, let there be light. That's what happened. It's like he overshadowed the earth and said, let there be light. And then you got all, all the way back to 1 Chronicles chapter 17. Where he said, I will be his father. But you guys said, in the church era, in the dispensation of the church, he should be as God. As God, 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 in three different forms. First one, it was three different spirits. The second one, three different manifestations of God, okay? But not scriptural. He says so they speak a vision of their own heart, not out of the mouth of God. They don't get it from the word of God. They say, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace, talking about these homosexuals. How is it that you being a man can't determine that? You say I'm a woman. Well, I say I'm a bunny rabbit. Does that make me a rabbit? Or does this make me delusional? That's how simple that is. If I say I'm a, I'm a frog, I'm delusional. Need mental help. But you guys to let a man say he's a woman. Or a woman say she's a man. She's delusional. Look in your pants. It's that easy. You can't change what you're born genetically. You can mutilate your body. But, but that does not change the reality that you are a man or a woman. It is an abomination. Your mind is twisted. But what, what they say? Oh, man, it just gives them people right. People can love what they love. God calls it an abomination. Okay? And they you got people saying that God loves everyone. No, you love what? He said the Sodom and Gomorrah was an example in First Peter, uh, Second Peter, chapter two. For those who shall live such, he destroyed them with an overthrow and burned them up. Okay. He said, and you shall have peace. And they say, everyone that walketh after their after their the the imagination of his own heart. That's your imagination and your delusion. You're a woman. You're a man. Man, you got a penis, but you're a woman. Right, right, right. Okay, bro. I'm going to get a surgery to fix that. Yeah, get it doesn't matter. You're just a mutilated man now. It said, it said no evil should come unto you. Nothing, God ain't going to do you nothing for being perverse. Okay? They tell you that. Money, greed. That is the dispensation of the church era. It says, for who, it says, for who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? Who has stood in the word of God and have perceived, you know, mentally comprehend and heard, understood his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? He said, behold, as we see in our world today, behold, a war one of the Lord is going forth in fury, even a grievous war when they having one right now in Burma, or, or, or Miramar, they call it, used to be called Burma. It's always, we have some kind of tornado, some kind of hurricane, something, okay, earthquake, all signs from God. So, so even a grievous whirlwind, and it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. And the anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart. Because guess what? He's self-existent. He's the creative creator. We didn't create him. He created us. So he didn't ask us how we feel, because it's his creation. So in the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. Where we at now? I have not sent these prophets, yet they run. He had not sent them. A lot of you out there ain't something aware. You just, you just picked up a Bible and figured that's a good way to make some money. Okay? 
I want to heal and feed the sick and all that. Where did the scripture tell you to run out and do that? He said, his disciples, I'll show you what he's his disciples to do. He said, I have, I have, he said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they run. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. He ain't revealed no scriptures to you, but you got a word from God. Do you understand this? How many in this church dispensation? Out here with a word from the Lord, and he ain't gave you no revelation knowledge at all in that book that you're looking at. He said, but if they had stood in my council, in other words, in his word, it has caused my people to hear my words, not your imagination or your thoughts, <coughs> then they would have turned them from their evil ways and from the evil of their doing. So I'm a God at hand, says the Lord, not a God afar off. Okay? And it goes on, I'm not going to read all of it, it goes on to just say they will not profit these people nothing. That's why there's no changing. There's no life changing going on when these people go to, to church. They went in the devil, come out of the devil. No change of mind at all. Okay? And he say, he goes on to say, and I, and I heard what the prophets say. They prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have a dream, have a dream, Martin Luther King, too. You should never mix with these people. The people have only gotten sicker and they and have embraced and wholly engulfed this thing called homosexuality. But it says in the Bible, the nation of Israel, though they be as the sands of the seas, only a remnant shall return. So many of you will die here in these nations, in this America. So here it is. I'm laughing because you know. So he shows you what he was teaching. Oh, that's what I said I was going to do. So many of you grab the Bible and run out and you got a word from the Lord. God it went to school and then listen to the devil who don't even have the spirit himself. God went to school and, and I got a little grade. I, I got a license. You won't see my license. I need to pull my license out. I have one too. So what? I'm anointed by God. But I'm not anointed by man. Luke 24. This is the problem that we have today. The church, the era, the, the dispensation church is really over. You guys ain't realize it, but it's over. It ended with COVID. That's why it is, it's like a dead circuit now. It's over. And we're at the point of life where it says ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of truth. People are thinking, I'm, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. It gives a description of the, the people we're dealing with today in, those, in that lifestyle. And 44, he said, and he said unto them, these are the words, this is Luke 24, for those who are led by the scriptures. <coughs> okay, excuse me. He said unto them that are, they said, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things. These must be fulfilled, which was written in the scriptures, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he their understanding. Notice they just didn't figure it out. He opened their understanding that they might understand what? The scriptures, not your opinion or your philosophy or your thought. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And notice this. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Now he said in his name. Anybody can't say that? I just caught that. Then that repentance of sins should be preached. He didn't say in my name. We let you know he's named after his father. Preach in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Oh, I'm was part of that one. Um. But in his name, okay, so what he says, beginning at Jerusalem, that's where they were at, okay? That the repentance and remission of sins, this is, oh, okay, I dropped one. Let's look at this. As a matter of fact, let's back up. Let's back up to Luke 17 so we can see what we're talking about and where it all starting and what all of this represents. Represents Revelations uh, 12 and 10 also. Salvation has come to man. Now it's come salvation. 
So 20, he says, notice this. See, this is the gospel before the dispensation of the church era. Age. Okay, or era. You can call it whatever. Okay, when he was demanded of the Pharisee, this is Luke 17, 20, in verse 20. Okay, Luke 17, in verse 20. He, says, he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God, why are they looking for religion? When the kingdom of God shall come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God come not with observation or observance. Neither shall I say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, what happened on the day of Pentecost? Let's jump to Acts 2, where he told you that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name, beginning at Jerusalem. Acts 2. Okay, he said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were in Jerusalem, people, and suddenly, and you'll see in a minute, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, you know, without observing or observation, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they appeared into cloven tongues, like a fire, and they set up on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Didn't he say the kingdom of God would be within you? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So this represents the birth of the kingdom of God. And they began to speak with other tongues of the Spirit, getting mothers, don't get carried away with the tongues. He's not talking about no, they talk, he spoke in a language. And they just keep reading. And they were all dwelling at Jerusalem. Didn't he say that this should begin, Luke 24, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name, beginning at Jerusalem. The air goes to say, they are all they at Jerusalem. These uh, the nation of Israel together, the Hebrew people at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, wherever we have been dispersed. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language, not a babbling tongue. Okay, so we see, as it said in Luke. That, he, that what was be happening and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Talking about the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? And if you switch it around, it's Christ Jesus. You're talking directly about the Son. You say Jesus Christ got the Father and the Son. Beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Okay? So he said that should be happening in Jerusalem. So we know we're down in Jerusalem. Acts 2. And then we get here, he said, then it shall come to pass, this is Acts 2.21, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They said nothing about no sinner's prayer. We ain't got there yet. We go, we're going to go to Acts 2.38, so don't get carried away. But he said, whosoever, that takes away from the clergy. I'm the only one to baptize you, brother. That's not, that's a lie. He said, whosoever. I'm the preacher. Maybe you want to get right to church. That's a lie. Whosoever to call up on name. So that means somebody holding you under the water, standing over you, saying, I, in the name of Jesus Christ, I baptize you for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and bring them back up out of the water. The blood has been applied to that person. Like, I don't care who it is. Okay? Say, so whosoever shall call up on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, hey, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, see, the era or the dispensation of the church era or age brought in this Trinitarian idolatry or um, false doctrine, heresy. You know, it, that's where it comes from. Okay. But, but it tells you, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders of sight, which God did by him in the midst of you as the midst of you, as you yourself know, God was working through him. That's what the Gospel of John was saying. So when he told Philip, have you been so long with me? He said, I'm standing in my son, and you don't recognize this? That's, he, he know that it was Christ. That was his son. It was not God himself, but God was working through him. So the presence of God was there. And he's asking him, you did not notice? You thought he was just doing this by himself? That was God working through him. 
Okay, and it says this in our Bible. Say by, by miracles and wonders of sight, which God did by him. So where do you come up with this junk that comes from 325 A.D.? The beginning of the dispensation of the church era. 325 years after Christ. And it's called wood and stone. Other gods. It has nothing to do with the God of gods. Okay. Okay. Which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. So him being delivered by determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by wicked hands and have crucified and slain. You have tortured him and put him to death, whom God has risen up. So how is this God of God rising himself to be dead to? Okay, come on, man. Say, whom God has risen up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that, that he should be holding of it. Now, down to verse 36. It said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ, our King and anointed. Okay? Okay. It says, Now, when they heard this, when they understood, they were pricked. In their hearts, okay, they were at their convicted and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, what did he say? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for what? The remission of sin, that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And for the promises are to you, to your children, and to all, not some, to all, not some. All that are far off, even as many as our Lord, our God, shall call. Okay? And you're called by God, and you're rejecting baptism in Jesus' name. I got you, buddy. You say you're called by God, but I, won't, I don't think that's necessary. How would you? You ain't called by God. You're not sent by God. Minister, you talk about Satan's minister, that's all it is. That's all you guys are playing into. You guys are, a lot of you guys belong to Satan. You guys Teaching his teachings. Okay. okay. That is the church era. That is the dispensation of church. The era of falsehood. The mystery of iniquity. And it culminates in the final. When we get down to the point. Of where we're at now. Where we're establishing the digital dollar. In the one world order. That's where all of this is leading out to. Where the wicked one. Shall be revealed. When that antichrist. The dictator of dictators. Shall be revealed to the people as the savior of man. That's where you are at. Okay. So let us know. It says, so we. So you tell me you from God and you about God, but then you don't have this. And that repentance and remission of sin shall be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. What message did you bring? Where did you start? This, this is the problem. This is the gospel. It's about a kingdom, about a physical and spiritual kingdom. Um, oh, Acts 19, that's what I wanted. And so and I knew it was something. I was sitting here in my mind pondering what, what was the scripture that I want to conclude this with. In Romans 8, tell you, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, there's none of it. So if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have no parts of this. And whatever you talk you teach you didn't got from somebody or you, it's coming from your imagination and if it's not imagination these twisted scriptures you're giving people and it came to, it said and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples and he said unto them have you received what the Holy Ghost since you believe have you I right, so let's do I profess the Lord as my Savior. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Don't even know it's a requirement. Any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. In other words, the Son of God. He told you that which I speak was from my Father. And he showed you in Deuteronomy 18 and 19 that whatever he said, 
he, because he gave them the message, if you reject it, you're condemned. He said, when they heard this, when they understood this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They mean they told of future events. They weren't just blown off in the air with some babbling tongue. And he said unto them, and, and, he, and he went into the synagogue where the church is. It was no church. Church started in 325. That is the beginning, the dispensation of the church era. And it's the era of falsehood. It said, and, and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. That's why they talk about the king knows what he's talking about. The kingdom of God. That's why they tell you ever learning, never come to the knowledge of truth. They stuck in that teaching of the church era. They don't grow past that and realize that was an error. Error. Not as an error as in time period, but I'm talking about this falsehood. The Trinity going to heaven. We told the meek shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5 and 5, Psalms um, 38. And then when you talk about a rapture, you got Matthews 13, where the wicked shall be plucked off the earth. I won't tell you about Ezra's, but that, that, I have to go back and look and see where that was at. That yeah, blessed those that are left. <laughs> I mean, it talks about that in the book of Ezra's. That's the book they pulled out. In the Bible, that you know, is many any man add or subtract, so they took books out. Um, but this is what we're looking at. The error the dispensation of the church is really over. We should be talking about the kingdom of God if you're not stuck in the ever learning um, state of mind because those who are ever learners, they don't they don't ever come to the truth. I'm gonna get that. That was Timothy, I believe, chapter two of four. Timothy two and four. I'm going to correct there. There's three let me see, there's gonna be probably three. Yeah, I'm looking at that ending. Yeah, this is this is this is it right here. This is the era of the church. This is the dispensation of the church. This this said this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. This is the people behind the altar, people in church. So man for man shall love be lovers of their own selves, covenants, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Speaking evil of the word of God, telling you don't have to be baptized. It ain't necessary. That's works. Not understanding works mean actions. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. False accusers. Incontent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Those people can't stand the righteous. And those preachers can't stand the righteous. These spiders are those that are good. Okay, okay. <laughs> is they traitors? Eddie, hey, my, you know, yeah, I know. I just remember that. High-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They more into this get rich. God, I want you to prosper. He don't want you broke. Won't you live lavishly? Pleasures, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. High mind, they think something they holier than thou. Deal with that too. People hoes. Hoes. And then they get saved or they were saved. Anybody stays in the church, as the Bible says, in the remain in the congregation of the dead, where wonder out the way I understand those people and spend all their time and they're going to go to the lake of fire. Giving it to everybody, but when they got saved and got their lives together for that little space and time, they became holier than thou, high minded. They're better than everybody. And at the same time, they believe in a preacher that was telling them, stripped them, you know, plucking the word of God, making you think it's not true, pulling it out your mind, had demon detectors at the door before his death. Oh, he's going to open his eyes. Up and the day comes, he's going to be sitting in the lake of fire right along with the rest of his little congregation. None of them are going in. I don't, have, I don't even have to guess it. I'm like, if you stayed there, I left out. And I ain't going to just start calling our church and leave them, you let the people be. Because the, the day comes, they'll understand who they are. 
Okay, he said, but he said they high minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of godliness. You know, no, and, and, like I was going, no, let me call that off. Um, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They have a form of godliness. They look like it's holiness, but they deny the, the power thereof. They don't respect the facilitator, the word of God. They think they can go beyond or move beyond the word of God, and yet they okay. So they have a form of holiness. They look like it's holiness. They restraining themselves. Oh, I don't want to wear this stuff here. I don't do this. I don't drink. But drink is not even a sin. The overindulgence is. He said, from such turn away. He told you, abandon and get away from. For this are the sort. Of this sort are they which have crept into houses and led captive silly women, women who have no principles of virtue, laden with sin, led away with diverse lusts, all kind of ungodliness to me here. Ever learning, they read the Bible, looking at the Bible, can't figure out this is about the rise and fall of governments, and the main theme of the Bible is the nation of Israel. In the way our world world is today, telling us what is going to be the signs of Christ's coming. Chapter 17 talks about the different governments. Uh, when you talk about the ten heads, all those governments are under the influence and dictates of Satan. The first one to fall, when they talk about fire, fire falling, the one is, and the first one to fall was Manu, uh, Manuto Mussolini of Italy. Then there was Adolf Hitler. Then there was uh, Hiroshito of Japan. Then uh, Winston Churchill, which was representing Great Britain. Then Joseph Stalin, okay, then it was Roosevelt, or Franklin Roosevelt, I believe it is. Number six, number seven, really, uh, Nicholas Sarkozy was really in Madonna's by Chrome, even though the ladies moved out. In, in it. So you're dealing with number seven, that's the Western EU. And not Western EU, that's the European Union. The Western EU is the Ten Horns. Look at their flags, people. And that, that nation that brings over the kings of the earth, that's America. We don't. We can't figure it out. Everybody got to go to the UN, which has no teeth and no power. Okay. okay. And so they say, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of what the realities of the Bible is. They got this book, read it, read it, read it, and came and figure it out. They go into church, the dispensations in church era. They there, but they know what is the realities of the Bible that you hold. Talking about kingdoms, the rise and fall of governments, and those who are submitted to God's word, not to tradition of men, not to be a preacher. Okay? It's talking about the God of gods that they have submitted to him. And then it was so funny, they highlight before the nation of Israel was moved to the Western Hemisphere, they highlight that they would be big Christians and Islam. Islamic people, wood and stone, other gods, it has nothing to do with the God of gods, the God of the Bible that you hold. As many of you hold King James, and some of you got plain English Bible, which is really just like garbage. Um, and I don't know I'm glad I'm it, but it's garbage. There's a lot of stuff in there just like, man, they try to water it down and mess the whole thing up. But the King James Bible has always been the best book to have. And you I hold it, and you can't even understand. He told it perhaps he was going to be a great nation. You got Israel over there right now, imposters. Revelations 2 and 3, those that say they're Jews and they're not. Then you got Jeremiah, I believe it's 16, 19, said they inherit lies. Neither group belongs there. But there's a natural and spiritual Israel that is their, that is their home. Okay? And just because you're born of the seed of April, or you can track your lineage does not make you a part of the nation of Israel unless you're submitted to God. And a lot of you, sad, he said, Israel should be as the sands of the sea. He a lot of brothers, black people, a lot of y'all have embraced that abomination, homosexuality, bisexual, whatever you want to call it, LGBT, whatever the garbage is. It's all an imagination and an illusion. You, you think you're a dog, once you run around being like that, then people will put you in the crazy house. How in the heck they ain't going to do the same when a man puts on a dress and say, I'm a woman, and he's clearly a man. Or a woman 
does that and says she's a man? How is it that that's not addressed? That's that's mental illness. Something's wrong with you. It's an abomination. You love what you want. What you guys call love, God calls an abomination. So, so be it. The people, I told you the way to the kingdom of God. And you guys can dissect this video. Like I said, ever learning, ever coming to the realities of this of, of this Bible. What is it all about? So now that Joannes and, and Jambramis would stud Moses, so that these also resist the truth. The reality is of the word of God. They resist the truth. They resist the word of God. <coughs> Men of corrupt minds, reprobates concerning the faith. Faith being the confidence in the word of God. They are rejects. They don't have no faith in the word of God. Okay? This is what we're dealing with. This was the church era. Starting like back 325 all the way up until now to COVID. Now we moved out of that dispensation, but there's still people going. But they don't understand it is about the rise and fall of government. We, we're about to move off into a total dictatorship. The digital dollar where they track every move that you make through your spending habits. When you have to take, which is in Revelation 13, that no man can buy or sell except he that had the mark of the beast of that new world order. You know, if I can pull it up, I'm going to just end out. And I'm going to let this be my ending. If I can get it up quick enough. Um, I hope this has been informative to you. You can go back. Don't take my word. I gave you scripture. Look at them. Read, ponder, think. Don't be no fool. All you right, how you know. Read it. <coughs> and then you can see for yourself what is really going on. And understanding the book of the Bible is about the rise and formation. A lot of them promises that people will be talking about, they don't even misunder they misunderstand a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff been told to you is not. And a lot of people from foreign countries talk about they're Christians, and first thing they ask you for a dollar. I don't know when, how you uh, conceive that I was your God. I got I'm a measure of God, but what does that mean? I don't mean they don't mean I'm going to dig in my pocket and give you my money. Okay. Hold on. What underpins a world order is oh always God. the financial system. Awesome. Uh, I was okay. Let me see something. Uh, what underpins a world order is always the financial system. Uh, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when they came off the gold standard in '71, and so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is. Uh, what underpins a world order is always the financial system. I, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when they came off the gold standard in 71. And so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is to absolutely everything else. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are in the... What underpins a world order is always the financial system. Hmm. I, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when they came off the gold standard in 71. And so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is to absolutely everything else. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. And the new one, the new accounting, is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having a almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. They're gonna have every transaction you made. You I mean this? This is a totalitarian system of government. She is talking about action that happens in the Both economy, the Bible, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital continuity. What's going on? It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. Every single transaction.
There's action that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital constitution of human rights if we're going to have digital money. Uh, but also, this new money will be sovereign in nature. Most people think that digital money is crypto and private, but what I see are superpowers introducing digital currency. The Chinese were the first. The U.S. is on the brink, I think, of moving in the same direction. The Europeans have committed to that as well. And the question is, will that new system of digital money and digital accounting accommodate the competing needs of the citizens of all these locations so that every human being has a chance to have a better life? Because that's the only measure of whether a world order really serves. So what you're dealing with is a new world order and the so, fulfillment and of regulations I'm talking about is the new world order. That is Revelations 13. She's telling you about China's a little advance, and everybody's going to move to the digital dollar. This is the word of God, and what I just told you is, is how to enter into the kingdom of God. This is real stuff. This is not play, and it's up to you to save your own soul in this day and age. Don't look for me to come rescue you and try to pull you out of no hole. Look, it's, it's right there before your face. It's before everything. You, you, you can't help but see it. The Bible talks about uproar of people, commotions. It's going on. It's going down. Earthquakes, famines. All of these things are happening prior to the return of Christ. That government system she's talking about is only going to last three and a half years. And after three and a half years, then comes Christ Jesus. All right, you guys. You guys have a good evening. And dissect the video. Dissect it. Go dig through it. Look scripture. Look at the scriptures. Go look at the scriptures and see if I'm telling you the truth or not. You guys have a great night. Yo, don't, don't forget. I have a station. You can always go look at all my videos. It's called. It's on YouTube. It's called the Gospel News with Joseph Smith. Once again, it's the Gospel News with Joseph Smith. Said right above some Mormon posts, but I'm not a Mormon. Okay, as you can very well see, you guys have a great night.